Welcome to the Women's Sanctuary, the podcast about tending the soul of women, sisterhood, and the rise of the sacred feminine. I'm your host, Arlia Hoffman. Hi there, welcome back. This is Arlia, and it's been a, it's been a minute. But here we are, February 2022, and I am out of the closet. (laughs) I was recording in my closet, and I love my closet, but just wasn't working anymore. So I'm in the living room and um, at my desk, so you might hear some background noise, and if so, I apologize. But on the whole, I think it's definitely going to be better. Um, I'm working on a new studio, so, you know, stay tuned. That may happen soon. There's my dog eating in the background. I've got a cat right in front of me. (laughs) So I apologize for the background noise. Okay. Um, I kind of want to give you a sense of where I've been and because it might be someplace you've been energetically in the last three months. And my cat just sat on my notes. (laughs) Excuse me. Can I have that? Excuse me. Move, please. This is not my house, clearly. (laughs) I'm just a tenant here. I'm just the servant. Okay. Um, where was I? Oh, where I've been in the last three months, because it might be somewhere you've been. So I pulled up this quote from Anne Lamott. I wish grace and healing were more abracadabra kind of things. Also, the delicate silver bells would ring to announce grace's arrival. But no, it's clog and slog and scooch. On the floor, in the silence, in the dark. Hmm. Thank you, Anne. Oh, I feel like Grace has arrived, but I spent plenty of time on the floor, scooching, slogging, in the silence, in the dark. It's been so hard. And one of the things that got me through it was knowing that it would shift. And, you know, things do shift. But I also had good intel (laughs) that things were going to shift soon. And I I just, I did my best to trust that. And they are. They're beginning to shift. That's why I'm here. Because life looks much brighter at the moment. And I can't take much credit for that other than I'm doing my work, I'm showing up, and I'm listening. That's what I'll take credit for is listening. (laughs) Because if I weren't listening, these opportunities would pass me by. So that's really important. You know, when you feel like maybe something's talking to you or something's bringing you a gift or you, maybe there's an opportunity on the way, even if you don't see anything bright on the horizon, listen. Because there is always change afoot. And you have to be listening and looking to see it and to sense it. So, yeah, it's been, it's been a slog the last three months. More grief, um, more heartbreak. And yet my heart, my heart has, has broken open. And there are, there's healing and gifts and sweetness. In the journey. Not in the heartbreak, but in the journey. And one of the things that has brought me to the microphone today is um, well, a, couple, a couple of things. One is a reminder. And because I'm going to speak to you as if, you know, you're on the path, you're doing the work, because I figure if you're listening to me, you are. About here we are at the end of February 2022, and global events are. My dog's digging on the couch. Okay, she's done. Sorry. Um, late February 2022, and global events are very tumultuous, <clears throat> rather scary, and unclear. And so a reminder that you listen, put your ear to the ground. You listen for what you can 
decipher as true, because not everything you hear is going to be true. You sense what you can about what's actually happening. You respond with your heart. You, you let your heart break if that's what it wants to do. You take action if that's what you want to do. But above all, above all, you keep your seat. You come right back to center and say, what is true in this moment, in, this, in my personal reality, in the five seconds, in this five seconds, in the next five seconds? You come back to your senses. What can I, what are my physical senses telling me? What is my inner sense telling me? And stay there, stay grounded, whatever it takes for you to stay grounded and present and awake and open hearted. I know it's not easy. It is not easy. I mean, you know, I can cry at the drop of a hat these days, and I did yesterday. And I'm still coming back home. Because in our current reality, that's what's required. It's essential. It's essential. Otherwise, we'll be swept away by all the drama, by all the heartbreak, by all the trauma. It will sweep us away and we will miss the opportunity to meet it and, and add our healing, whatever that may look like. One of the things I really learned during the pandemic when I was, in the, I'd say, definitely since the big pandemic, but mostly in the last year, when life was really quiet for me and I wasn't getting the direction I would normally get, like, go here, have a temple practice, advertise this, do a program. Mm, none of that. It was very quiet. And I was deeply involved in my own process. And I was reminded that all the healing that we do, whatever inner work we do, everything we do, if it's you loving your child or loving your cat or walking your dog or picking up litter or paying it forward in the grocery store, I mean, those the, even still, those are outer actions. Just doing your work and holding a vibration of love and compassion, nothing is wasted. Everything you do has an impact on you and vibrates out into your the outer world and into the universe. Nothing is wasted. There's nothing in your life that is wasted. It all serves you or serves the collective and serves the universe somehow. Oh, so with that reminder, I say, even if you're, it appears as if you're doing nothing, everything you do matters. Whether it's prayers or reaching out to loved ones. I have a loved one in Eastern Europe who's not in the direct line of danger, but really close. And so I felt like the only thing I could do that was safe today was to send an email saying, I love you and I'm praying for you. That's what I got. That's what I got for that. The other thing I wanted to say was, well, I, I am saying it, is to keep your seat. Don't get swept away by the drama or the pain. If your heart's breaking, let it break. And I'll remind you of the self-compassion exercise. I'm sure I've shared it here before, where you put both hands over your heart and you just feel your hands over your heart. Your body doesn't know the difference between being touched in love by yourself or by someone else's hands. It just feels lo a loving touch. And so receive your own loving touch over your heart with compassion for yourself and whatever you're going through. I do that frequently and it really helps. 
Okay, so breathing. I want to move on to some um, something else. As I frequently do, I'm going to reference Lorna Bevan of Hair in the Moon Astrology. And again, I'll say she has plenty of free resources on Facebook and her website. But if you'd like to subscribe to her monthly 5D report, it's not expensive. Um, and it's really, really good monthly information. Um, and this month, of course, she's covering all the astrological aspects. Um, but she makes a couple of important notes. One is what I was just sharing, which is um, she she suggests dropping the drama and mastering the art of embodiment. Now, the drama could be anything. It could be the external drama going on globally. It could be your own personal drama. You know, the ego is so good at drumming up drama. Oh, my goodness. Um my partner and I had a conversation the other day, and, and I I finally said something that had been on my heart. And um, it created a little bit of personal drama for a few seconds, but then we quickly dropped into heart space and had a, a really good conversation. And just as we did with the self-compassion over the heart, <clears throat> the... The practice is to move into embodiment instead of the drama. And so that's, as I said, coming back to your body, coming back to your senses, literally, about, you know, this very moment. What can I see, touch, hear, taste, smell? What, where's my physical energy? Where's my body? Um, you know, am, am I in my, personal authority? Am I sitting in my own seat? All of these things are critically important now because there's so much, there's so much unpredictable around us and so much changing. And again, I'm in my living room and there are kids screaming next door, but they're playing and having fun. So hopefully it won't bleed over into the, into, into the soundtrack here. Um, so getting back into your body is well it's it's all it's it's our main focus here at the women's sanctuary um because that's what humans do and particularly that's what women do um to return to their power is to get back in their body so the guidance is to is to really focus on the embodiment and the other piece that's important to remember here as we move forward into March is that the energy is closing a multitude of doors behind us. Your old life is gone. Old opportunities are gone. Old relationships are gone. And the more you look back, not only will you not be looking forward and miss the opportunities, but all you will be doing is reliving the pain from a past experience that is no longer real. It's like a vapor. It's like a mirage. So the more you can be here now and look forward and operate forward and manifest going forward, the more power you have. And the more you can see clearly what's actually happening for you and around you. We have this really pivotal opportunity in the next three months to clear the decks, to allow all of that to drop away, to cleanse ourselves, however that may happen for you. If I say, you know, cleanse yourself, allow your spirit and body to show you what that might look like and prepare yourself for moving forward just as I have had multiple opportunities come to me now that the energy has shifted you may as well and so be open and observant and watching because sometimes those opportunities don't come again you know Elizabeth Gilbert talks about um 
in big magic about those those um energies that might come that will come to you looking for a home looking for expression and sometimes they'll come back but sometimes they won't so if you send it away if you don't respond it might just move on and that might be an opportunity lost but nothing is ever truly lost <laughs> nothing's ever lost it is it will find a home somewhere so what opportunities are aligned with your energy that you would like to invite in how powerful is that to to set that in your heart as an intention um so cleansing and clearing yourself and saying here i am in this moment this is who i am all the former versions of me are gone they're somewhere else here i am now you know what's available to me what speaks to my soul what lights me up what puts sets me on fire whatever metaphor really brings you alive and walk towards that notice i didn't say work towards it or make it happen i said walk towards it because this is a partnership with spirit and we are no longer in that reality where you can make it happen now you can work really really hard but what are you working hard for are you working hard hand in hand with spirit or are you working hard through your ego another place to be aware um so lorna speaks of the next 3 months as a karmic sweep so the ability to look forward and in in this moment what's available to be cleared and cleansed and released and cleansed so that you are the most powerful version of yourself that you can be and here is the crux of the podcast today she talks about the um the equinox spring equinox happening march 21st and i haven't even read it yet i haven't even read the information but her title is cord cutting so carrying on with this theme of cleansing and clearing your energy and your relationships and your your history is the notion of cord cutting and cord cutting is severing the energetic ties between you and that which no longer serves you that which is no longer you relationships that have run their course relationships that you now understand are toxic and dangerous to you anything that is no longer serving you and is ready to leave your experience when i was taught this practice years ago i considered it a metaphor but the more i did it the more i understand it is a metaphor it is a real physical experience we have energetic ties to everything and everyone around us and so when you cord, cut a cord that doesn't mean that there are no longer ties between you and the physical world or you and that human being it is the opportunity to cut all the ties that no longer serve you all the things that are negative or unhelpful or unloving that are not in congruence with who you are I remember at one point um my my training was to do this type of of um ritual at a ceremonial fire and I had just been through a difficult breakup and I didn't have a fire in front of me but I had a lake I had a lake across the street I was like well okay we're going to use this we're going to use this lake I go to the lake I you know I say some prayers I I connect with the lake and oh that works well too it can be a candle it can be a bowl of water it can be a bathtub it, there are many ways to do this and if if you have an inkling as to how to do that and you feel called to do something like that to clear your energy this is the time to do it 
in the next three months, really clearing it yourself out so that you are as pure and clear in your energy as you can be. And if you want help with doing that kind of practice, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to hold space with you and walk you through it. And then what is required after there's been a cord cutting is some psychic healing and some grounding. So psychic healing would be if you <clears throat> have a wound where something has been cut off your body, um, that wound needs cleaning and clearing and protection and some time to heal. And psychically that is necessary as well. So that would be, you know, in impe- impeccable self-care, loving that place where there was something there and is no longer filling it with love and beauty and whatever you can, you are inspired by to fill it with and give it time to heal. Again, if this is a process you want help with, feel free to reach out. I can, I can do that with you. And then grounding. So in addition to the embodiment and the clearing, again, we will get swept away if we are not grounded. I love the fact that you know, it's kind of left the realm of spiritual practice and it's um, it's in more secular spaces like secular versions of yoga or forest bathing um, or earthing. All of these terms refer to some way for you to be rooted in your being and connected with the earth. Pachamama, Gaia. Friends, I just... I just don't think there's anything more important right now. I mean, look around. (laughs) Look around how crazy and chaotic are things around us as they shift, as, as we shift into a new way of being. We have to be grounded in ourselves and rooted in Gaia. And there are, again, a myriad ways to do that. In in her astrology report, Lorna gives a great list of a lot of them. I pray that you are finding, you know, ways to ground and come back home to yourself and keep your wits about you, you know, come back to your senses in the midst of all of this. I I have a feeling it's not going to slow down. We're just going to continue to be presented with opportunities to decide who we are, what's true for us, and how we want to move forward like that. Do we want to move forward in conflict with others, or do we want to look for commonalities and unity and solve for unity? That doesn't mean conformity, it means unity. Just as if you're in a committed relationship with someone, you are not identical. You have your, you have your similarities and your differences, <clears throat> and you work to, you work through your differences and you celebrate your similarities. It can be as simple as that, globally, for the human race. Oh, I make it sound really, really easy, don't I? It's, we all know it's not. But it, it is those very simple principles that get us back to where we can all live together. Um, okay, so I am sending you so much love and, and grace wherever you are, in whatever situation you find yourself. Remember, there is grace somewhere waiting. There's, there are mercies new every morning. There is always light coming in from somewhere. And hopefully you can perceive it and be open to it and find it. And I'm happy to say we have several guests coming soon. Um, I'm really excited to be talking to 
some very special women coming up. So do stay tuned for that. And um, I did just notice that, that, yes, absolutely, you can hear children playing in the background. So hopefully, hopefully that wasn't too distracting for you. Oh, thank you so much for being with me here on the Women's Sanctuary. I'm sending you so much love, grace, peace, and self-compassion. I'll see you here again next time on the Women's Sanctuary.